for it. So here it is, our Gotta Love Connecticut Hockey's featured drill. How you doing? My name is Marvin Minkler. I'm the 97 Mid Fairfield Blues head coach. And today's drill is the chocolate drill. The benefits of the chocolate drill is it's a great progression drill. You can progress it from mites, squirts, peewees, and bantams. It starts off with building blocks, a basic two-on-one setup. It focuses on a breakout, a regroup, and then attacking in zone. It's a continuous drill, so it's great for conditioning. It's also great to set up and see where your team stands in the season, what players need to work on. Do they need to work on stopping, starting, passing, shooting? You can tell a lot by this drill. Key teaching points in this drill. Defensemen have to be able to make good outlet passes. First pass defensemen are critical. Also, players on the wall. Wings need to be able to handle the puck both in their feet and on their stick. If they can't make a direct pass, they'll find a way to make an indirect pass to the player swinging through the middle. Okay, here we have a basic setup in the neutral zone. We have forwards on the blue lines facing in zone. We start with two defensemen and we'll have the other defensemen along the wall just like this. On the whistle, D's gonna come back to the puck, grab a puck and come behind the net. Forward one's gonna come down and hold the wall. Forward two is gonna to swing towards player one. So we're just gonna have our defenseman rim the puck along the wall. Player one's gonna have his butt against the wall and he's gonna control the puck in his feet. So many times forwards try to take the puck on their back, backhand awkwardly when they can just use their feet to make a play. First part of the drill, if he's under pressure, he's gonna use his right foot to block and chip a puck off the wall. If there's no pressure, and there's no pressure in this drill, he's gonna allow the puck to go through his feet, hit his left foot, and bring the puck right to his stick. From there, he's gonna find player two and give him a pass. That variation that he makes with his right foot, it's a pressure situation where the D on the other team is gonna jump and pressure him. He doesn't wanna turn the puck over, so he's gonna protect the puck, turn, chip the puck, again, getting it to player two who's coming in this area. So what we have is a simple little breakout, two player breakout. As 4-1 passes the puck to 4-2, defenseman two has come in, into the blue line. We want his feet inside the blue line for this drill. That gives him good gap. Gap is the distance between the defensive player and the offensive player. The tighter the gap, the less time and space player two has to make a play. So we want our defensemen to challenge themselves in the drill and he's not gonna move until forward one makes a play. Once he moves off the line, after that pass is made, he's going to establish the middle of the ice in the neutral zone. Player two is going to carry the puck, and he can take his time. He doesn't have to give it to two. Number one's going to fill a lane. Two fills a lane. Defenseman two is back. Offensive gap. After the breakout pass, defenseman one isn't going to lag back. He's going to gap up as quick as he can in the neutral zone. As you can see here, D1's gapped up. Forward two has carried the puck into the neutral zone. F1 has filled his lane. We have two lanes here. 4-2 is gonna give the puck to the defenseman. And this is where we regroup. A regroup is basically a breakout in the neutral zone. So the same thought process, we're gonna get the, the D to make a pass to the wing, to make a pass to the middle. The defenseman is gonna execute a defensive escape. So he's gonna pivot around backward. Forwards are gonna simply fill lanes. This lane's occupied right now. We wanna find an open lane. F2 is going to read that the defenseman turned that way, and he's going to fill that lane. Is it critical that he supports there? It's a two-man drill, not so much. He can certainly hinge back in his lane. He can come down actually and pivot, presenting himself to the forward. Forwards have to open up, give him a target. The defenseman can take a step, and what we want our defenseman doing here is don't just pass out of the escape, come north towards the blue line. Once again, this D is going to challenge and get as tight as to the play. Close in his gap, defense is going to make a pass, and then they attack two on one. As the players get older and they grasp this drill, you can add different elements. So defenseman two gives forward one the puck. Forward one and forward two are going to attack in the offensive zone. Another reason why this drill is great is because whatever you want to work on on your two-on-one, later on on your three-on-ones, you can establish here. For the first part of this drill, what we want our, our two forwards to do 
is to create a little confusion for D1. So they're gonna crisscross. So in hard, and we wanna enter the zone wide, and then we're gonna come lateral. D is naturally gonna back off the play, and lateral, forward one goes. Whenever, anytime a player moves lateral, he does that in an effort to create time and space. In this situation, time and space is being created for forward two. We're gonna have a little drop pass there, or scissor pass. In a game, hopefully we can get the D to bite on this, okay, and he'll stay with you, creating a little time and space for forward two to come around and get a shot. While all that occurred, once D2 made that up pass, he's gonna get to the red line, he's gonna pivot backward, open up, meaning skate forward, come and get pucks on this side now, and the drill progresses out of here. Again, our first pass in this drill is a rim, forward one's gonna come down, hold the wall, two's gonna slide towards the middle. We're gonna emphasize that this player plays the puck in his skates, and then makes a play accordingly. The next element that we're gonna add is another forward. So we're gonna come out and we're gonna do a regular breakout. Here we want our defenseman to cut the net, I mean getting close and using that net. This way if there's a four checker on her, he's not gonna get taken out here. He's gonna protect himself using the net and he's gonna give a good hard pass to forward one. Forward two jumps in the drill, simple little swing. Forward three can swing away. Again, this defenseman's not moving until F1 makes a play or a little up pass here to the center. Once the forwards touch the puck, this D is going to pivot off the line, and then the same thing holds true. Tight gap, type offensive gap, we're going to regroup in the neutral zone. Now, regroup here in the neutral zone is just a little different. As we go into the neutral zone in this three man play, we'll say F2 has the puck. Now, you have to teach your forwards how to read and react. Again, we've established three lanes and we know we need to fill them. So players need to understand what lanes they're in. So if we're in a situation where we have three guys in the same lane, we're in trouble. So then they have to read and react. Forward two is carrying the puck, gives it to the defenseman. Again, we wanna emphasize a nice defensive escape either to his forehand or his back end. And then the first player sets the tone. So if he comes back to the puck, he wants to come back almost parallel with the puck, he is filling this lane. Forward two and forward three need to communicate. Forward three would probably jump this lane. And then forward one would make himself really big and come lateral in case this player, the defenseman, gives a quick up or bumps it to the wall. Once that play is established, they're gonna attack this defenseman who again, nice tight gap, three on one into the, the zone. The next step is gonna be add a defenseman in the neutral zone for a regroup. And I'd simply just put this New D and old D. So basically the new D jumps in from the wall, the old D's been in for a regroup before. Basically from here they do two regroups. Now what we're teaching here, forwards come out, we're still gonna attack three on one in zone. We wanna give the puck to the defenseman. And what we want in this drill is our weak side wing or weak side forward is gonna hold the wall. He's gonna be the guy that's not moving here. For two, can swing any way he wants. He can swing to the strong side or he can swing to the weak side. If he swings here, the defenseman has the puck, that means again, two is filling one's lane, one's gonna jump to the middle. Defenseman's gonna get the puck. Defenseman, you have to support each other. You can't be on the same plane. In a drill, if there's a four checker, he's gonna pick it off, break away, you're in trouble. Make sure you establish good support, 10, 15 feet, this way we can go D to D here, find the wing holding the wall, this player's jumping, give it here, and again, attack three on one in whatever system that you want to attack it. Okay, D, a little variation what you can do here. I know we like opening up the ice, good support in this play. Sometimes the defenseman's in a situation where he can't make a pass right away, so he's gonna start walking the middle of the ice. That means he's filling his lane, so what should he do? You're right. Swing in behind him because he's got a support. Little scissor pass here, and then same thing. He'll have forward three, forward two, forward one. This defenseman's gonna come around, and don't rush the pass. Take a little ice coming north. These guys will be moving. Give him a little outlet pass. Away you go, attack three on one. Now what, what's happening here is once this play's made and these forwards are coming up, we still want our D to try to get to the red line. So again, we had new D, old D, they're coming out, the new D came from the wall. The old D is going to turn, grab a puck, and start the breakout. 
the new D magically becomes the old D. Next D comes out. He's now the new D. The new D is now the old D. And away you go. Thanks for watching Gotta Love Connecticut Hockey's featured drill and a big thank you going out to West Coast Sports Center of Brookfield, Connecticut for gearing me up.